right, appreciate you guys following along with me today. Just wanted to talk about my fuel system for a little bit. If y'all have any questions, drop them in the comments. Requires a lot of fuel when you're running methanol. Have a lot of questions about, you know, what do I need to do? How do I run it? Um, what's the, the requirements? People ask all the time, what can I do about my fuel system? What do I need to do? Uh, can I get by with a holly blue pump? Can I get by with a holly black pump? For you carbureted guys, blow through, I tried it. Been there, done it, it did not work. So I'm like one of the most budget oriented racers there is. Um, I have a very, very thin budget that I try to make these things go on. I always try to do more with less. Uh, a lot of times it backfires on me, but sometimes it works out good. It just kind of depends on uh, the mood of the car and, and how it's reacting. But the first thing you gotta do when you're looking at fuel system, the most important thing, the absolute most important thing is the fuel pump. So for methanol, we run an Enderly pump. Um, you can get these from several locations. Um, this is one of those old cast iron um, pumps. They make some nice billet aluminum ones now. Uh, gear rotors, dual rotors. There's a whole bunch of different designs, but we just run the old standard Enderly 110 or Enderly 990, Enderly 1100. All of those pumps uh, flow anywhere from 13 gallons per minute all the way up to 22, 23 gallons per minute. These pumps flow a ton of fuel, so you have to be very careful to pick the fuel pump properly. You want to get it sized correctly. You want to have a little bit of room to grow into, but it is possible if the pump is pumping too much fuel and your regulator cannot return the fuel that is not going into the engine, you will not be able to control fuel pressure. So that could be very problematic. So, so size the fuel pump properly. But this pump is reversible. Uh, you take these uh, screws out, these bolts out in the back, and then you turn it. And depending on which way this thing is facing, you can see it's offset. If it's facing this way, it's a regular style. If you flip it the other way, then the pump will pump the opposite way. And that would allow you, if you wanted to turn this and make it into a, a cam drive uh, directly off the motor, you can do it. These are really nice pumps for the money. You can get in these pumps. Um, six seven hundred bucks thousand bucks at the most but the best best thing about a belt drive fuel pump is you don't have to have an amp draw um it draws nothing off the battery so it runs off the crankshaft so you just have your pulleys uh you you do your uh crankshaft pulley and your pulley on the pump the goal is to have it to go about 50 percent underdrived so if you had a 28 tooth pulley on the fuel pump you would have a 14 tooth pulley on the crankshaft and that runs at 50% of your RPM. So if you're turning the motor at 7,000 RPM, the pump is going uh, 3,500 RPMs. And these pumps are very serviceable and rebuildable. I bought my pump used and it was flowed before I got it. And you can see this has got the RPM that the pump is going, the gallons per minute and the PSI. These are great pumps for a budget racer. So the next thing that's important in your fuel system is the size of your lines. Um, I could probably upgrade mine, but it's been doing fine the way it is. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm not having an issue yet. But coming out of the fuel cell, I have a front mount fuel cell. It's just a little three gallon fuel cell. Coming out of the three gallon fuel cell, it's got a number 12 line down to the pump. Now, a key thing is with, with the pump also, uh, you want the pump as low as you can get so it gravity feeds. You want the, the pickup tr facing the rear of the car so as the car is accelerating. You know, the, the G-forces of the fuel is trying to push it back into the into the pump. Uh, coming out of my pump, I got a single number 10. And that single number 10 comes up. It goes through my fuel filter. So there again, being budget oriented, I have a fuel filter that come off of a NASCAR. I got it off of eBay about 10 years ago. Um, it's one of the Peterson inline fuel filters. It's 100 micron. It's cleanable. It comes apart. I can fully disassemble it and keep track of any debris that I need to get out of there. Um, but I think it started life as an oil filter of some sort. So um, eBay was my friend. So it comes out number 10 line and then comes up and goes over to the intake. Um, now looking at the intake, the way I did mine, I did a little bit different. Um, I've got a number 10 coming in on, on the driver's side here. It goes through my fuel rails. My fuel rails are pretty big. Um, they're a three-quarter or 11 sixteenths inside diameter. 
So it comes in, it goes down to the driver's side, and then off the back of the intake, um, I've got a number 12 line looping it over, and it comes over to the passenger side, and then it comes down and feeds, and then it goes to the, the fuel pressure regulator. The fuel pressure regulator just holds it up, and that's what generates the pressure. So uh, for mine, I, I run a base pressure of 90 PSI. So, you know, this thing, it raises fuel pressure about one to one. So at 40 pounds of boost, it's got an additional 40 pounds of fuel pressure, which is what it needs to keep the, the fuel map happy. So that works out great. Uh, this, this setup, when I did it, there again, trying to be budget oriented. A lot of people said it probably wouldn't work, uh, but I was trying to save some money and not buy as, as much braided line and as many many Y blocks. So I decided to try it. And so far it's been, it's been, it's been good. I haven't had any issues with distribution from cylinder to cylinder. So last but not least, uh, getting the fuel into the cylinder. I run these old ancient, uh, precision 550 injectors. Now these things are, are huge. They're not, they don't have near the spray pattern of a, um, like a billet atomizer injector. But these things float a bunch of fuel. Um, I've had good luck out of them. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things. The billet atomizer probably makes more horsepower. There's some YouTube videos out there where Mike Moran, back in the day, um, he did a flow test between the billet atomizer and, and the precision. And it was crazy. The spray pattern was insane. The billet atomizer is like a fire hose. It really gives a nice, wide, small droplet spray pattern. I mean, these precision injectors it's like a garden hose with nothing on the end opening and closing flow a bunch of fuel um they control fine i don't have any issues with the control but the um the vaporization is probably not quite as good um but one thing i look at it i mean i've got a bunch of boost going in a lot of airflow going by it so hopefully that's going to vaporize it now i have also been really fast trying to skimp a little bit on the fuel system I had 160 injectors. That's not near enough fuel for methanol. And so what I did is this one inch spacer plate that I now have on there, I had a one inch nitrous plate. And that one inch nitrous plate was one of the perimeter style nitrous plates. I think it was a nitrous express, the Gemini or twin Gemini, I think was what it was called. And I had four fuel jets in each corner so I wasn't using the nitrous at all so I was using it for I had two fuel solenoids and I had a uh, hundred and ten thousandths jets in each one of the holes and so I would progress that thing on when it got about 15 pounds of boost I would start bringing it on and I could run it made about 1800 horsepower 160 injectors and supplementing the fuel through the nitrous plate uh, didn't really have any distribution issues. I mean, I was able to fine tune the, the cylinders that, that were a little funny um, through the holly. But um, so I could, I did skimp on that a little bit, but I was always just one solenoid failure away from a blow up or, you know, one burnt wire or one failed solid state relay. So that's the reason I went to the Precision 550s. But um, I mean, I did go fast, you know, on on the, the 160s and a spray bar. So it can be done, but you have to be more careful. I just want to give you guys some more info on my fuel system. Methanol is a great fuel. It does have about half the BTU content versus gasoline. So it takes about twice the volume. So that's why you have to overdo the fuel system and it requires a lot of fuel. So size the pump, the lines, and the injectors correctly, and you can run methanol cheaper than you can gasoline. Around here, the average cost of methanol is about three bucks a gallon versus a five gallon pail of C16 or Q16 for 75 to 100 bucks. A methanol fuel system will cost you more money in the beginning, but it will save you tons of money in the long run. Another huge advantage to running methanol is you can run non-intercooled at insanely high horsepower levels. Now, I'm not saying the intercooled would not make more power, but it allows you to run non-intercooled and drop some weight out of the car and not have to deal with buying 10 to 20 bags of ice per event. One last thing to think about, if you do choose to run methanol, make sure you check with your local tracks because a lot of times people that run alcohol, they are required to have a better fire suit. Uh, Dash 15 uh, jacket, pants, gloves, and boots are typically required 
and they usually recommend Dash 20 stuff. It just gives you more protection because the, the bad thing about methanol is when it is burning in broad daylight, it is very difficult to see the fire. It basically burns invisible. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.